What if our motherboards were just lying to us the entire time? A new UEFI flaw enables pre-boot attacks on motherboards from Gigabyte, MSI, Asus, and ASRock. Guys, a very interesting vulnerability today in the world of DMA, right? Direct memory access and how this affects this particular line of motherboard manufacturers. So in the world of motherboards, you have this thing called DMA, right? If you have a device that does very fast data transfer, think your network interface card, or more particularly your GPU, your, your graphical processing unit, these things have to be able to send data at gigabits per second to your computer directly with as little input output overhead as possible. So this world of DMA, which allows the device to write directly to a location in memory, enables that to happen. In computer hardware, we kind of have these two paths for when data is going to leave the CPU, right? If we wanna make the data leave the CPU and go to RAM, that process goes through the MMU, the memory management unit. It takes the thing that is a virtual address, the address that the process thinks it has access to, and it translates that down to where exactly in RAM that lives. It goes from virtual to physical. It gives the CPU the impression that it has access to all of the memory, when in reality, it only has access to some of the memory. This same process applies to the world of memory mapped IO when you're talking to an input output device. And this is where DMA occurs. When you wanna to talk to your graphics card, right? Before you can do any of that, you have to set up a special set of pages in the IO MMU so that when you write to the virtual address, you know, FFFF1200, when you write to this location, it actually punches a hole through the IO MMU and writes that packet out onto the PCI bus so the graphics card can get it and render it. This whole world of DMA is what enables really fast translations to happen and really fast transactions for high throughput data. <laughs> Before we go, guys, look at this. This is 984747. It's almost 1000000. It's almost a million. If you could hit subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. It'd be great before the end of the year if I got a million. That'd be, real, that'd be neat. That'd be really cool. Okay, let's keep going. So why is this a problem? Well, actually, the people that found this vulnerability are the researchers at Riot. They make the Vanguard anti-cheat, and they said that Valorant currently will not load on vulnerable systems. Why is this? How, how could this system of direct memory access be a problem? The vulnerability causes the UEFI firmware to show that DMA protection is enabled even if the IO MMU did not initialize correctly, leaving the system exposed to attacks. So how could you attack anybody with this interface, right? Well, in this scenario, we have a very benign, a very cooperative device, right? We have the NVIDIA uh, GTX, you know, whatever, 5070, right? Maybe GTX is incorrect, but you know what I mean? I, I'm, not a, I'm not a hardware guy. Okay, relax, 5070 here. But what if, for example, I plugged in really, really evil interface card, the card, right? And literally all this thing does is it sits in the PCI bus, right? If there is a misconfiguration in the IO MMU, it may be possible that this device over DMA by sending a write request can overwrite data that lives inside the CPU. Basically, this vulnerability is that by default, when the IO MMU comes up, it should have DMA preboot protection enabled. What you don't wanna have happen is a PCI card to be inside the computer and be able to transmit write requests to overwrite a region of the memory that has maybe the operating system, right? Because the whole point of secure boot, for example, is to go from the UEFI root of trust. So you have the UEFI S uh, certificate authority here. It does some variety of signing. It signs maybe a shim in the Linux scenario. And eventually it loads the OS that is signed by the upper level shim, right? What you're doing in this is as the PC boots on from UEFI and is less trusted, you are making it more and more trusted to eventually load the Windows or Linux operating system, right? So secure boot at this time means that, yay, the OS is signed, it's good, we have a little check mark there, right? We, we know the OS can be trusted, right? We do a little, little check, it's, it's a V. Um, it's good to go. But after the secure boot has occurred, if the IO MMU is not properly established, there is a world where you can then use this to overwrite locations in the, in the OS and do evil stuff. And in the case of Vanguard, they're very concerned obviously with cheaters, right? The whole world of DMA attacks in cheating is hard to defend against because they have to be aware of all DMA attacks that can occur that won't necessarily show up as like a process or a kernel module, right? DMA attacks are hard to, to detect because there, like, there is no transaction that occurs that gets mediated through the kernel. Once the page tables are established and able to be written to by the DMA card, unless you can detect the DMA card on the PCI bus, 
you're not gonna see it doing its thing. It's very hard to detect. Now, Vanguard or Valorant rather, what is it called? Vanguard? Now, Vanguard does load as a boot stage loader, which means basically it loads in before the rest of all the other drivers. So it has very, very early hooks put in. But that being said, it still is extremely hard to detect these. So because of this, they depend on pre-boot DMA protection that tells basically the computer, hey, the IOMMU is not allowed to let any transactions come through that could do anything evil. Well, again, the vulnerability here, so the attack requires physical access for malicious PCI devices need to be connected for a DMA attack before the OS starts. During that time, the rogue device may read or modify the RAM freely. So what is the bug? Even though the firmware asserts that DMA protections are active, meaning the IOMMU is configured and blocking, it fails to properly configure and enable the IOMMU during the early handoff phase in the boot sequence. This gap allows a malicious DMA capability PCI device with physical access to read or modify system memory before operating system level safeguards are established. That's not great. So what this literally means, guys, is <laughs> the IOMMU, like, like the UEFI, or the, the motherboard firmware is like, hey guys, listen, we got it all set up. It's ready to roll. The CPU is hardened. All those PCI attacks are coming in. We're not letting them in. But, but he's just, he's just, he just is. He just, he's like, yep, guys, just back, beep, just back him up. It's, it's no, it's no bueno. Okay. Now, again, how this happens at such a scale, again, it'd be one thing if like one manufacturer did it, like, oh, they made a mistake, but it's four manufacturers. I think I read somewhere this is like a misunderstanding within the UEFI spec on like who is responsible in the boot process for hardening the IOMMU, kind of crazy. Um, and so, yeah, as a result, if you have these motherboards, like, again, this, is, this only matters if you are under the threat model where, like, someone's gonna walk into your house and put in a wacky PCI card, or, like, maybe you wanna just, like, hack and you wanna play Vanguard, or you wanna play Valorant with, like, cheats. I don't know, either one of those. Uh, but yeah, these, uh, these motherboard manufacturers are affected. Now, there is a caveat here. It doesn't necessarily mean that it can read and write the RAM freely, it's basically gonna be a function of the default configuration of the IOMMU, right? At the end of the day, all the IOMMU is doing is receiving requests off the South Bridge on the PCI bus, and it reads the headers of these requests, right? These things are called PCI TLPs, translation layer packets. Inside the TLP, it's gonna have a destination address that it wants to write that data to, and that destination address is gonna be some virtual memory address, right? It's gonna be a device address so that the PCI device doesn't like get exposed the virtual memory map of the kernel, right? The IOMMU is going to give it a fake address that it's going to use to map into another memory range. So the, the, the destination address may be this, right? You know, a bunch of Fs and some zeros, okay? Now, when this thing hits the um, IOMMU, all the IOMMU is gonna do is look inside its table of addresses, comma, RID, the uh, device identifier, right? Because this is gonna be a function of not only the virtual address space that it's given, but also the device name that's on the PCI bus. And it's gonna look and see, okay, cool. Do I have an entry with these two as keys that maps out to some virtual kernel address, right? Or some memory address I wanna write to. And so maybe there's like, you know, I don't know, um, F7001234 is the address, right? Obviously it wouldn't be this, it'd be page line, but that's not the case, or not, not important right now. And then it uses this to then take the data and it gets written there. And like, that is the translation that occurs. So to say that like it would be that a device could access any memory address would be a function of what translations exist in the IOMMU by default when the device turns on. Now, I'm really, and again, I didn't do the research, so I could be wrong. I'm really hoping that the default answer is not like, oh, the device turns on and then IOVA, the IO virtual address space just maps to the entire RAM space. That would be crazy. That would be, the worst security by default I've ever seen in my entire life, right? But as far as I understand it, you have a PCI TLP that hits the, the IOMMU, does a translation, and it writes it somewhere. So if this page table translation does not exist, it can't do the write. And so luckily the researchers at Riot at Vanguard, you know, they found this vulnerability in all these motherboards and they reported them to the manufacturers and they are currently in the process of fixing it. And what is the solution? Well, they just need to update the firmware on the boards to make sure that like the IOMMU is properly configured as early as possible so that, you know, there's no device that can sit in there and do something evil before the, the IOMU comes up, right? Because like it either should be completely turned off and processing no translations or only processing translations of the OS. If it's in some weird, like half open misconfigured state, then yeah, the, the IOMU is like not doing its job at all. You don't, you don't get any pre-boot DNA protection, which is just crazy. 
Yeah, and so what can you do in that window? You're able to use that to have hardware cheeks that sneak in, inject code, and hide themselves before Vanguard even wakes up, where Vanguard, again, is a boot stage driver that loads before everything else. So it's just crazy. And would Rust have fixed this, guys? No, ob- guys, who are you talking to? Obviously not. Obviously not. <laughs> anyway, guys, if you like this stuff, do me a favor. Hit that like button. Hit subscribe. Uh, go uh, go subscribe. I'm almost at a million subscribers. That's crazy. Go check that out. Um, go press the sub button, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Goodbye.